Okay, do me a favor and listen to the intro to this song. Now, what's your first impression of listening to it? If you said messy, chaotic, or noisy, I couldn't really blame you. This is a song called Panda Hero, and it's one of the most bizarre songs I have ever listened to or seen on Nico Nico. It's unapologetically creepy, the production is messy and jarring, and heck, even the diva listed at the beginning of the song is wrong. And yet it's one of my favorite songs ever, let alone one of my favorite music videos of all time as well. Here, let me explain. For all its weirdness, there's a strange sense of curiosity in all this song it stills in me. Yes, the production is messy, but here's the thing, it's purposefully messy. This was clearly done by someone who wanted to put their audience on edge. Someone who wanted to make them uncomfortable, and is still emotion in you. And the music video perfectly complements this. When the two are combined, it almost makes it look like the images on the screen are going to come out of the page. It's immersive. If I had to describe Panda Hero in one word, I would say that it's grimy, and that's the point. One listen to this song, and you could tell this wasn't done by an amateur. This was done by someone who wanted to make something that would stick with their audience. And that in its essence is the bizarre genius of Hachi's music. For those of you who don't know who Hachi is, he's a Vocaloid producer who joined Nico Nico in 2009, who quickly went on to make some of the most iconic songs in Vocaloid history. Makara Shinka, Panda Hero, Donut Hole, Dune, that last one I mentioned, Dune, holds the record for the fastest video to reach 1 million views on Nico Nico. But here's the catch. It was only released two years ago, a complete six years after his prime, a testament to his immense popularity in the community. But that's not all. Even after leaving Vocaloid to pursue a career under his real name of Kenji Yonesu, he would rise to become one of Japan's biggest pop symbols arguably making him the most successful person, period, that started with Vocaloid. But popularity doesn't happen without a reason. So what made Hachi so unique compared to other producers? Well, the thing that made him stand out is, well... He actually has no style when it comes to music. Unlike when I talked about Wawaka during my last video, each song that Hachi puts out is completely different from the last. In fact, before I was a fan, I had no idea that Donut Hole was even made by the same man that made Makuro Shinka. However, some of his most popular songs around 2009 to 2011 do follow a trend, and it's their dark tone and themes. It drastically stood out compared to the cut pop that was being posted at the time. The messy and rough production was a huge contrast and easily made him stand out. The subject matter of his songs, for the most part, was always hard to swallow, even for Vocaloid today, which is known for having some pretty dark stuff. Prostitution, drugs, kidnapping, those are just a small number of the themes that have been hinted at in the lyrics of the songs. But there was something disturbing but oddly fascinating about Hashi's music. A big part of his music is about reading between the lines. His lyrics are famous for being indirect and fully up for interpretation. But maybe some of you are thinking, well, it can't be all of his songs, right? And you know, now that I think about it, maybe you're right. Let's look at Donut Hole, for example. I mean, Donut Hole is clearly a song about trying to remember a dead loved one, right? Or is it? I mean, there are clearly lines in this that I would definitely say about someone I love. But others seem a bit... off. Okay, well, maybe they were dying and these were their last words. Well, no, because then you have this line here. This is clearly something I wouldn't say if I knew someone was gone. If anything, it suggests that their opinion on the matter has changed. So clearly, I don't understand what's being said in Donut Hole. But do I need to? Well, if I did, I promise you I probably wouldn't be talking about this song six years later. Possibly one of my favorite aspects of Hachi's music is his music videos. Hachi's music videos almost seem like an extension of his songs. I'm not necessarily saying they're necessary to enjoy his music, they're not, but I feel like I get a better idea of the tone or idea he was trying to give when I watch them. For example, 
When I watched the Makaroshinka music video, the bright colors like the yellows and the neon greens help display emotions of high energy, which in turn helps me better understand the utter chaos of the lyrics. When I listen to Hope Release Rick's song Carcasses, the dark blacks and reds help me understand the ominous nature of the song. These music videos are helping to express the atmosphere the artist intended when writing the songs. Now in comparison, let's look at Deco 27's music videos. And while I love Deco 27's music, and he has some great rememberable music videos over the years, I never really felt like I was gaining more from watching his music videos, you know? Typically DSCF is the first one that comes to my mind when I think about this. It's a great song, and the music video is absolutely beautiful, but honestly I don't feel like I'm gaining more from watching it. It's mostly just eye candy. But when I watch a Hachi music video, it's all about reading between the lines, just like I said with his lyrics. And they're just full of so many small details that I just want to scratch my brain thinking about them. Like, why does Gumi's face change at the last second during Makuroshinka? Or, what are they really reaching for towards the end of Donut Hole? When I watch his music videos, it always makes me want to ask myself, is there something more going on here? And I think there is something to be said for artists who can make their own videos like Hachi. I know this isn't a Vocaloid song, but whenever I think about the attention to detail he puts into his work, I can't help but always think about the Aine Kuraine music video, and how he talked about the process was so daunting on his hands that he got repetitive strain injury just from it. It goes to show you that for producers, it's more than just talent. Passion and hard work are equally as needed to express a vision. Now earlier I stated that his songs from 2009 to 2011 shared a common theme, and that was their dark tone. And while his later songs like Donut Hole and Dune are not exactly happy songs, they're not nearly as dark as, say, Rine or Miss Pumpkin's Comical Dream. So why is that? Well, in my opinion, I think that's because the mindset Hashi is in now is much different from his mindset during that time period. To understand what I really mean, though, let's take a closer look at his past. From a young age, Hachi was always focused on making music. He had no interest in school, and primarily he spent his time writing lyrics in his notebook during class. In fact, he actually said he would calculate how many times he could skip his classes without failing every year. But there were other reasons for this as well. He struggled to communicate with others, and was often jealous of how easily his classmates could do it. It made him feel like a monster, always standing out from everyone else. And to make matters worse, he lived in an emotionally and physically poor household. Now I want you to listen to this. Over the course of 25 years, he has probably spoken to his dad a total of an hour. And yes, he did live with him. Imagine living in the same household as your parents, and you've only spoken to them the same length that your professor would give a lecture. At the end of 20, he'd be diagnosed with high-functioning autism. It was a sigh of relief for him to know that he wasn't the reason for everything, that he wasn't the problem, but unfortunately that didn't mean life was going to get any easier. Eventually he left for college in Osaka, but dropped out after a year. Around this time though, he discovered Vocaloid, and posted his first song in 2009. For the next two to three years, his world was Nico Nico, and that's no exaggeration. The only time he left the house was literally to go to the supermarket. He finally found an audience that would listen to his music, and it meant everything to him, but maybe a little too much. While Hover released Rick's song on Carcasses would be his first song to break a million views, it would also be the point that his current girlfriend would leave him for focusing on Nico Nico too much. And about halfway through his career, he had this nagging feeling in the back of his mind. Was this Vocaloid thing really alright? Should I be doing something else instead? One day he finally came to the realization that he was alone. He had his fans, but no one was in his actual life. And he felt that he had made the wrong choice over the past couple of years. He lost the will to live and fell into a deep depression. For the next year, he would spend his free time doing nothing but watching gaming videos and sleeping. Information from the outside was even too painful for him. He said the only thing that kept him going was his Twitter and the videos he had posted on Nico Nico. Hachi is my favorite producer of all time. I love the dark themes of his earlier work and his almost insane sense of imagination. However, I would give that up any day if it meant that he didn't have to go through what he did those eight years ago. It's hard to not look back at his music and think that the negative theme surrounding his work was not a result of his mental struggles. Like a cry of help from someone who didn't understand the point of why he is this. And while Hachi would eventually pull himself out of his depression as he continued to pursue his career as Yonesu, I can't help but look back at my favorite songs and re-ask myself again, is there really something more going on here?
Thanks for watching. Hey there, Upnub here. This is my second video, and as I mentioned earlier, Hachi's my favorite producer of all time. So it was really cool to finally get the opportunity to make a video about him. If any of the music in this video piqued your interest, I got some good news for you. Both of Hachi's albums, Official Orange and Bouquet and Barrel at Sea, are now officially available on multiple different streaming services. As far as I checked, they're on Spotify, Apple Music, and YouTube. My recommendation would be starting with Official Orange. It's a great album, and probably one of my favorite Vocaloid albums ever. That being said, if you guys have any advice on how I can keep improving my videos, feel free to leave it down in the comments. Thanks. Bye.